Hi, welcome to Leafwood Learning. Today we're going to be doing an art lesson inspired by the country of the Netherlands. Um, and it's the canals in Amsterdam. Um, this is just an artistic interpretation of maybe a street or a canal that you might find if you were to ever visit Amsterdam, um, which is a pretty big city in the Netherlands. Um, okay, so here we go. So for today's lesson, you will need a white piece of paper. Um, heavier is better because we're going to be using some water with the watercolors. And you need a Sharpie or a permanent marker, ruler, watercolors, paintbrush, and um, some kind of towel or something in case you make a mistake. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw the houseboats or the boats that you might find on a typical canal in Amsterdam. And I like to start in the middle and just we're going to do the middle boat that we would see first. And then I told my students, you know, minimum of two boats would be great. Um, but you can see in mine, I did one hole and then I gave the illusion of the two other ones would be out of our, our view, right? So we're gonna do this first one. Um, you can make it super simple or you can make it as detailed as you want, okay? It's definitely up to you. Um, if you go down into the explanations, there'll be some links for some ideas that you could put on your boats and your buildings, okay? So print those out or take a look at those as you go along. So the first thing we go, here we go, our boat. So the three boats that I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure that the bottoms of the boats are pretty parallel to one another, right? I don't want one boat up here and one down here. So that's what I'm going to keep in mind as I put my boats on. And I'm going to make kind of like a U shape like that. And that's going to be the bottom of the boat, as you can see. Then I'm going to connect these two points and you connect them. You can connect them with a straight line if you want. You can make them kind of swirl um, however you want. This is going to be the, the bottom of the boat. So I'm just going to kind of connect it like that but straight across works too now we're gonna be I'm doing boats that are house boats so if you just want to keep it a simple boat you can as well um, so I'm just gonna draw a house on this boat because my Dutch person here is gonna live on this boat so I'm just gonna draw a house that I would want to live in if I was gonna live on a houseboat just gonna make it straight. You can make it a double decker if you want. You can make it single story. Um, but like every house, it's gotta have windows and a door, right? You gotta be able to get in. So I'm gonna put a door here. I'm gonna make this door round, right? And then I'm just gonna give it, What? how about, I'm gonna have a window back here and then I'm gonna have a window here. I'm not gonna make it too detailed you can make yours as detailed as you want okay oh wait i got you gotta have a doorknob otherwise how are you gonna get in <laughs> all right now i'm i'm gonna be fine with that boat the way it is i'm gonna keep it simple today now i'm just gonna do two others but only the portions of them right the rest of the boat is off the page so here's this boat i'm gonna make it nice and simple again i want to make it somewhat not perfect but pretty much parallel or in line with this boat. So that's gonna be the tail end of this boat. Boop. And then we're just gonna see like the tiniest bit of this one. Right, just the illusion that there's more boat. There's more to the city. And then here comes the next one. Mm, what kind of boat is this gonna be? I don't know, it's a mystery. This is more of a typical one, apparently, huh? And this one's gonna be a double decker. I can already tell. I could tell what I was doing. And it's gonna have just a simple roof as well. But I'm gonna put a chair here, because if this was, if I was living on this houseboat, I'd be sitting out on the deck talking to my neighbors, right? And I'm gonna put, this one is gonna have circle windows. 
definitely. Okay, so I got my boats, and they're going to be in the water, as you can see. I like to use a ruler for this part, um, and I suggest if you've got a ruler to use it. But what we're going to do is we're going to put the lines in for where the sidewalk or where the dock where the dock would be for our boats, right? So the key here is to make sure when you're doing the lines they're behind the boats so don't draw the line on top of the boats we got to imagine that the line is behind them right so I'm gonna position it I'm gonna say about halfway up the initial bottom part of that boat is where you're gonna want this line to be and I'm just gonna hold it with one hand the ruler and I'm gonna start for one boat and draw the line to the next one pick up my Sharpie and then draw from the back end of this boat to the front end of this one. And I'm going to pick it up just to take a look. Yeah, see? So it gives the illusion that's where the sidewalk is. Now I'm going to do the rest of the sidewalk. This one, it's going to be up to you, the artist, to decide how deep your sidewalk is going to be. When I'm planning for this next line, I kind of take a look at the boats because for me, I don't want the sidewalk to run into another line that's already there because it gets confusing with perspective, right? So I wouldn't want to draw this line starting from the tips of those boats. It, it gets confusing, right? So I want it to either start below and just be a very slim sidewalk or I'm going to want it to go up here start there and I'm gonna go there just because that's where my ruler is so here we go hopefully this works and if at any point you're like uh, I don't want to do this with Sharpie I'd rather be doing this with pencil then you know know thyself as an artist <laughs> the Sharpie makes you nervous switch to a pencil at any time all right I'm actually pretty happy I got my three boats I got my sidewalk now I'm gonna put the sides of the buildings so Hopefully you watched some of those videos that I put down um, um, for links and you saw that um, the typical buildings um, and these canals, you know, they're really close. Most are connected or they appear to be connected because they're so close together, right? So interesting when you start to learn about the history of different countries and how this is like built on canals and you know, the Netherlands is like most of the country is below sea level and they just have to really deal with like flooding and stuff. I think of Venice when I think of canals and sinking, but the Amsterdam has it too. Okay, I will digress here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the vertical lines for our different buildings that people live. This I'm imagining this is more of a housing district, not so much a shopping one. In my head, that's what it is. But if your buildings are more of shopping and restaurants, then you're gonna wanna kinda decorate yours a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my ruler right in the middle of the page and it's going to just start off the, in the middle of that boat too, right on the top. And I'm going to draw a vertical line, straight line up from the top of that boat and I'm going to go up the page, but I'm not going to go all the way to the top because I want to make sure I have room for my roofs. The roofs are really decorative and different from the roofs that I am used to here, right? So I'm just gonna draw that straight line up and I'm gonna leave myself probably about an inch. Um, but that's up to you. Some of the students that I've taught this lesson to, some of their buildings went up all the way off the page and some were down. Like they had different leveled, which is great. I love it when people take their own interpretation of a piece of art, right? Don't always just stick to what I say. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna do vertical lines going off the page. I suggest, just a suggestion, that you want to do um, like five lines. If you do a lot of buildings, you, you might start to lose interest, right? So here's my first building. Again, I'm kind of watching. I don't want my building to line up exactly with one of the lines that are already there. It gets confusing. So I'm going to go all the way over here. Don't worry about it being exactly the same height either. No big deal. And again, I'm gonna wait. I might not have a lot of buildings here. So now I've got one, two, three. Here's my fourth building. Is that one cricket? <laughs> Four. And here's my fifth line. 
five. So now I've got six buildings all together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six buildings. Got them? Um, and now I'm going to put some roofs on my building. Uh, again, I gave you ideas. You can print off the ideas or make them all up on your own. Totally up to you. I'm just going to go for it and whatever comes out of my head here is I'm just going to go with it, right? Uh, okay, so I'm going to start this building here. Okay, so once you've gotten all the roofs put on, at this point, um, it's a good time to take a break if you need one. <laughs> Go get your wiggles out. But if you're ready to do more, what at this point what you want to do is you're going to start putting the windows and the doors on. Again, just my advice, but each building kind of has its own personality, right? So all the windows wouldn't necessarily be the same. My only advice would be when you're putting on windows that are on the same story of a building, you want to try to kind of keep them in line with each other, right? That would be my only advice with you. So like in this yellow building here, these two windows should be somewhat in line with each other. Each story would be. Um, and also you could put doors on some, but some of the doors are going to be hidden by the houseboats or the boats that you drew too. So think about that too. Like would the door be showing or is the door hidden by something that's already there? Um, feel free to put things on the sidewalk. You can put people, maybe people are walking by possibly, or there's chairs and tables, um, bikes. That's, I know lots of people bike in um, Amsterdam. They obviously look at very small little streets there. Looks like it'd be safer to bike <laughs> and then drive a car. Uh, okay, so let's put some windows on. Um, so feel free to put any kind of window that you think would go on these buildings. Okay, so once you've finished your windows and you put like a little bit of detail, if you feel like putting some detail on your street, again, no pressure, um, you're ready to add a little bit of color. So let me show you what the first thing is. Wait, I can, I can already tell that I really, really want a life preserver on there, right? It needs it. I can already tell. I needed it. Okay, so you're welcome to just go ahead and start to watercolor if you want. Me, personally, when I'm watercoloring something like this, um, I like to add just like the tiniest of be details with like a crayon or an oil pastel or a permanent marker um, of some of the like more fine detail parts that I, so I don't have to watercolor. I can take the pressure off of that. And I also like to put little crayons just to show like a little bit of depth so it doesn't feel so flat. Um, Cause sometimes watercolor can just kind of bleed out and then it leaves you with not a lot of depth when you're doing something like this um, and you don't want to fiddle with it you already spent so much time doing all this you're like oh man now I gotta go do that let's just do it a quicker way this is what we're gonna do Okay, so you're, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna take some crayons or oil pastels, up to you. Not a lot, you're not coloring it in. You're just gonna add little places of color with your crayon that's gonna resist the watercolor, give you a little bit more dimension, and it'll take some of the pressure off of all the fine details. Any colors you want, sky's the limit here. Be really imaginative. You don't have to be stick to like one type of coloring, right? Just go for it. And I'm going to do all like the little fine detail stuff. And then I'm also going to go and do the water. I like to put a little bit of detail on my water so it looks like there's some waves in there maybe or some shading. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm going to do most of it um, is going to be watercolor. Okay, I think I'm ready to do my watercolor. So I got my watercolor palette here, and I got my brush, and I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna kind of be as creative as my little heart desires, and I'm going to just add tons of color, make it really vibrant. Here I go, right after I find Now when I'm watercoloring, I like to start at the top and work down. I don't like to paint and then my hand just like goes through it, right? So I like to start from the top and go down. So sky it is. Not gonna worry if I get some on the buildings. So I just realized I want to add like a little bit of something here for the water. I don't want it to be so flat, so blue. Totally up to you. But I'm just going to add just a little bit here where there might be some darker water. Probably should be using a darker blue, but you know what? I grabbed this one, so it's fine. And then I'm going to grab another blue. And I'm just going to make a couple ripples. Not a lot. I don't want to... do too many but I just want to add just a little bit so I don't have to spend a lot of time okay okay let's add the water take everything else oh I need this door I'm gonna make it uh oh it's got to be an orange door for sure go here And remember, you don't have to just stick to one shade of blue. Do other ones and um, use your paper towel to make it lighter, add more water. If you need um, lighter water or more darker water, you can add more paint. A little bit of dark here. Not too much. I imagine the canals are pretty light. I have uh, some girls the other day that, did that I did this with and they added some of my glitter watercolor paint to the water to kind of make it look like it was shimmering. I loved it. It looked really good. And I like to just tap just a little bit. Don't polka dot it. <laughs> All 
right, I think that looks good. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put something in the windows. Now, if you're afraid to do watercolor, I totally get it. Go back to your crayon and just kind of shade in some blues and some yellows to show, you don't wanna leave them white. It's, I think it looks better. You gotta put a little bit of color in those windows, otherwise they look flat, right? So I'll do a little bit of both so you can see both ways. So very watery yellow. And I'm gonna do it on there. How about this one? These are definitely open, there's no. So I add a little bit of yellow. Quick, 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 quick. And then I just blot it. Cause you don't want it too strong. It's just the idea that the lights are on, right? Someone's home, if you will. And then if you don't want to do it with watercolor, your word's going to bleed everywhere, you can just do a light crayon. And I'm talking light. Look how fast. And again, it kind of just gives the idea that someone's home, the lights are on. And you can also do blue um, if you think, you know, like there would be a window open on the other side and it's just all blue. You can also do just the tiniest bit of black if you think no one's home the windows the curtains aren't drawn but no one's home no lights are on so you just do really light black which i'm sure <laughs> you probably couldn't even see but i promise there's a little bit there um okay last one i gotta get here see how fast i do it just you know sometimes sometimes fast is okay If I was going to be doing this with like more detail, I would have made like flower boxes. I might have made a couple people in the windows. Um, but you know, I'm pretty happy. Although I, I see these. I'm envisioning blue in these, sorry. Um, I'm pretty happy. I think it came out good. Um, I'm happy with it. I hope you enjoy doing it and you have as much as fun as I did. Um, thanks so much for joining in and and painting and doing art with me. Subscribe, please hit the like button. And until next time, have fun creating. Bye. Peace out. Mm -mm -mm.